Hey guys, what's up? I got everybody here from TMI. Don't forget to write us an email at TMIPodcast2018. That's TMIPodcast2018 at gmail.com. Let us know how we're doing. Also, check us out on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter at TMI underscore podcast 2018. Just use the numbers. Don't spell it out. Ooh, don't forget Facebook.com slash TMI podcast 2018. Follow us on the Apple podcast app. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a five star review. All you YouTubers out there, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, TMI Podcast 2018. Look for the popcorn bucket. That's right. Also, check us out on Spotify and the Google Play Music app for all you Android users. Follow us and subscribe everywhere. We appreciate it. We're doing it for you guys, the fans. Thank you. The moment our fellow geeks, dweebs, nerds, and other unfortunates have been fervently waiting for has finally arrived. It's time for TMI Confessionals of the Nerd Confessionals Kind. Of the nerd Confessionals kind. of the Nerd Kind. And now, your hosts, Dave Odinson Warhowski, Jeff Nerfherder Chandler. Jim Kaiju Baker, Mike Mjolnir Evans, and Danielle, that's what she said, Warhouseki. And now, let's get on with the show. Here is TMI. Dude, oh dude, no no! Watch it was, out of the fingers. And right, he came out good. Hey 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 hey! hey, 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 hey we haven't seen him hey. since. Friggin- okay, okay, listen, listen. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, what's up? It's TMI here. We got a lot to talk about, and uh, we all just saw the new Avengers movie, Infinity War, and we're gonna get right on it. We're gonna jump right to it. So beware, there are spoilers. Major here. spoilers. If you have not seen it yet. Turn it off. Yeah. Fast forward to our listen confessional to, segment. Listen to episode three, because that's a good one. There yes. you go. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> You'll hear some pointless Infinity War speculation in that yeah, one. Yeah, all of it pointless. We're, we're still with you. you know? <laughs> all of it pointless. So all we've taken wrong. a time stone and gone back in time. That's right. So, uh, so first off, I really want to start this show off this way. So uh, we just do this one by one here. I guess I'll start with, uh, let's start with Mike. Mike, what was Mike. what was your first initial reaction when you walked out of that theater how did you feel i mean i was just like whoa i mean i I really enjoyed the film a lot and it certainly you know enters into my top three um but i was just taken aback by the ending of it i was enjoying it all the way through and just to come down on some sort of low like that (laughs) i I was just like reevaluating how i felt about the film absolutely absolutely agree and i could that's it sums it up for me uh jim same question I was really pumped at the end of this movie because they didn't shy away from anything controversial or downbeat or depressing. And I love that stuff. That's that's the kind of thing that I live for is when filmmakers go with their gut and they're not um, impeded by any kind of populist um, opinion. So I really loved it. And uh, I couldn't have been more happy because I know there's a second one. And um, so maybe everything is going to come back to fruition. Who knows? All right, Jeff. Yeah, I was blown away by this. I mean, this was everything I expected and more. It it really was just top notch. I don't have a single negative thing to say about it. Um, You do walk out of the theater basically saying, where do we go from here? You know, what is what is the what is this end game uh, that, you know, Dr. Strange alluded to um, and just knowing where these characters are. I'm very excited to see where they're going to take this. I totally agree with you. Like I said, I, I, I really felt it the same way Mike did too, is that I enjoyed the movie the whole way through. I was like, man, this movie's awesome. It totally falls in my top three as well. And then the ending just blew me away. I was like, what? Like, yeah, the bad guy won. The <laughs> bad guy got what he wanted. <laughs> exactly. Mike, this, this is to me, Mike is the one, you know, that, that spoke highly, you know, about, Marvel Comics 
and how he got away from them. And then the Avengers brought him back into that universe. Um, so this is really, this is really kind of your wheelhouse as far as I'm intrigued to see exactly what you felt, what worked, what didn't work. What, I, I mean, I don't think anything didn't work, but. No, I, I, for me, the whole thing worked. Um, it, it's a little bit different than the comics because the warning comes from the Hulk versus the Silver Surfer. Um, but once they got out of, out of that sort of Asgardian ship and, you know, Hulk came back into uh, Dr. Strange's Sanctum Sanctorium uh, and started the warning. I mean, we were just off and running. Yeah. You know? I mean, so it was just, you know, introduced to the Black Order. I, I'm assuming they have names. Um, and then from there, I was just on for a whole ride. Is and that? Oh, so the Black. I'm sorry. The Black. Those are the four. The henchmen. Henchmen. OK. Yeah. I don't think I picked up on yeah, the no, fact I that they him. actually had a Proxima name. Proxima Midnight. Ebony Maw, Black Dwarf. Oh, he was Squidward. He was Squidward, Blade, right? Yes. Okay. okay. Ebony Maw. Maw. Yeah, he's, Squid, he, he's Squidward. Yeah. And, and I think we got to see Doctor Strange as Doctor Strange really should be. I mean, casting his spells, doing his badness, long at his side. Uh, so, I mean, I was just really impressed with that character treatment uh, in this particular movie, more I, so than I was in his solo movie. Oh, really? Well, I, the, the, the dynamic between him and Tony Stark was phenomenal because they're both just egotistical jerks for lack of a better term uh but i loved that tit for tat and uh i think he right now is the most important character in this moving forward you know do we want to go chronologically through this thing or we want to kind of jump around because he did say he saw the outcome of this 14.5 million times and they only won once yeah. so he knows that what he did by giving thanos that time stone was the end game that this is the only way they were going to defeat him. How that is. I have no idea because he kind of disappeared at the end. Very, very good point because initially you know, you're thinking how, how does this going to play out that he's just giving the stone, but yes, he so foresaw all those, those different endings. And this may be the only way that they could have beat Thanos. And we won't know that until the next movie. No. No, but I was surprised, you know, I mean, they picked up immediately right after Thor Ragnarok. Um, and he already had he already had one of the stones. He yes. had already already decimated Xandar. And the yeah, the Nova Corps likely no more at this point. I know, because I'll tell you at the end, a little end credit thing. When I first saw that symbol, that's immediately what I thought it was. And then I'm like, oh, wait a minute. No, they're probably now no longer in existence. So, <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah, that was a little, they kind of glossed right over that. Although I loved that they got right into the action, as Mike said. So so maybe did. that's all they needed was just a little, you know, throw away, you know, that's the first stone or that's I have the power stone. Um, because you saw the look of disappointment or, or shock on the Guardians' faces once um, once they knew that he had the power stone because they realized that that's yep. where they left That's it. where it was. That's where they left yeah. it. I mean, part of this was, you know, we've been through so many movies with these Infinity Stones in the background, and he collects them up over the course of about two hours. Right. right? I mean, yeah. right? We, we had like 10 years, and then in two hours, he collects them all. And I was right. like, okay, well, that's happening like way more rapidly than I thought it was going to be. Right. Although I'd like to point out that back in, in our pointless speculation of last, I was hoping that it would play out that way, that the movie would go through the chase for the stones. And then finally they would need to go after that last soul stone, which kind of, they, they flipped it. It wasn't the soul mm -hmm. stone. They needed yeah. to last. It was the, um, it was vision stone, the mind stone. I think that one was, is, is, am I not correct? Yeah. No, you're right. Yep. The mind stone. Yep. So, Cause it was in his mind. I'll take credit for that. I there called him. There you go. I called Loki's death, but yes, you that's did. about it. That's I, about all. I, I was so disappointed I, by that. I, I think had to go. you know, so why? he's such a great villain. He's such a great character. And so they know as a character, so well established. I, I found him mm -hmm. absolutely mesmerizing. He wasn't over the top. He wasn't like, you know, mustache twirling madman. He he had a legitimate cause that he truly believed in. I guess most villains, good villains, believe that they're not a bad guy. He's doing this for the sake of the other half of the universe. He just he, has to decimate. Yeah, he sold it too. He did he did. Yeah, no, I thought he was completely I I I was every time he was on screen, I thought he was very charismatic. Him I might his, actually have been one of his henchmen. Him and his I feel boss kind of action. Bad for this because I mean, I sort of, I, I kind of saw his point in a way. Yeah. <laughs> 
See, you're your number two henchman. We yeah, can easily I, just jump I on board. Want, I, I didn't want to say that, but I did. Too. <laughs> I saw his point as well. Yeah, Team know. Thanos. There you Ooh. go. There we go. Uh, and I just like to point out the beatdown that the Hulk took in the first 10 minutes of this movie. Oh, and it wouldn't come out the rest of the movie. That's I'm it. Done. Yeah, I was going to say. I'm yeah, done. He took yeah. a breather. He's like, yeah, you know what? I'm done. And, and that first 10 minutes, I mean, completely undid all the goodwill that Ragnarok set up mm. with this, with the, the jovial Thor. And, and I think, Jim, you even mentioned this, which was if the, the tone wasn't what it was, you don't realize that Ragnarok, I mean, everyone's like friggin' dying around him or whatever. And so when he has that conversation with Rocket, it's so heart wrenching. It's just, it's gut wrenching, actually. That he's like, oh, yeah, my dad's dead. My mom's yeah. dead. My, si- my, my, my sister, my brother, yeah. my he's, entire f- race yeah. is, now, you know, I, and I'm missing he's the an last ass guardian. I it think it's crazy. It really, it really was. It, it, it gave some gravitas to the character, but uh, you felt, you felt bad for him. But yes. moving back to Loki, that that death happened so quick. It's like two minutes into the movie. Yeah. And it's just gone. And I was like, no, yeah. no, that can't be the end of it. Come on. And then he was like, he was like, no resurrection this time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. You've come back too many times. But, yeah. No, I think that uh, that that character is just too good to to leave like that. I think because, you know, you know, they have to in the next movie somehow bring everybody back because Spider-Man has more movies to do. Yeah. Um, they all do. I know. I, like I said, uh, you know, I, I saw it with my son and he was like, that's the entire cast of Guardians gone except for Rocket. Yeah. Mike, Mike, please give us your quote worthy phrase that you've been touting in these past couple of weeks. What have I been touting? <laughs> <laughs> nice All right, setup all right I'll do it. Nobody dies in the oh, MCU. Marvel Universe. Forever. Thank you for my quote. That's, that's Mike's quote. That's not mine. <laughs> I mean, was anyone else concerned that Stan Lee at the age of 95 was driving a school bus? <laughs> What's the matter, kids? you never seen a spaceship before? <laughs> um, yeah, he must have a special license. Or hey, didn't you see it up there? It was on his uh, on his on his dashboard. On his dashboard. Yeah. And and Peter Parker's like worse to keep in his identity. I mean, he's, like, he's literally crawling out of the bus with his mask on. <laughs> he's like, look, kid, squirrel. And he jumps out. <laughs> But just let me tell you that anticipation has been so acute for this movie um, just for the past 10 years. And the, the applause that broke out in the theater that I was in was at, at just the right moments. Um, and I just felt a surge of joy at just the Marvel logo when it said 10. In the, oh, yeah. You know? But even even go, they downplayed the theme. It was very somber. And even going yeah. in, oh, yeah. it was going to be a heavy handed. But you know what's funny? It's like I was in, in the restroom before the movie started. And out of the stalls come two grown men, one dressed full Black Panther, one dressed <laughs> Spider-Man. And I'm thinking to myself, I hope they're in my theater. I hope they're in my theater. And they weren't. It was like 10 theaters showing this movie simultaneously. So um so, so just just that excitement was in the air. The the crowd I was with broke out into applause at a number of spots of the movie when Captain America first shows up. Yep. When Thor shows up with his new hammer. Oh my god, that was uh, that gave me that chills. That yeah. and just to re- return to Wakanda in general. Yeah. And yeah, when Black Panther showed up, there was a pause yeah. as well. Yeah. And 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 even speaking of chills, there's so there like so many times, so many times in that movie where you just got the chills. And it was just like, oh my god, this is so oh, when, good. when he sends up the spider suit, the, the, <laughs> there, the iron there, there spider just, suit to Peter. Yes, there was just so many times, you know, just so many times, like when they broke into like one character and they broke into to, like the next character, and then you start seeing all your favorite characters back on screen on like all in the same movie, and just they, it seemed like every character had like an awesome entrance. You, you know what I mean? It yeah, they like did a great did job it. with with this enormous cast. They did. I thought they did a great job of. Really giving everybody their dues, their props, you yeah. know, their proper, um, yeah, in- introductions and storyline. Yeah, mean, and all kind of mm-hmm. none of them were window dressing. Each no. one had like a hero moment, um, yeah. which is no small feat. I mean, that that's you know, we we were worried about Avengers with five six characters. Now you're talking twenty plus. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and the, that one scene that I was uh, so loving was when her name is actually Proxima Midnight. So she's one of the uh, Black Order, um, Thanos' henchmen. And when she takes on um, Black Widow, um, Deny from The Walking Dead, I don't know what her character name is now. Oh, it's yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Michonne? Michonne. <laughs> <laughs> Minus no, the- not Michonne. And, uh, and uh, Scarlet Witch 
it was that was just that was that was a great scene in itself. It just, was a good scene. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just so many, you know, hero moments like that. Just that just made this a, a very uh, a good movie in my eyes. And it was up there with the first Avengers for me and Winter Soldier. Oh, yeah. I thought it was interesting that they were able to kind of keep it because Guardians has a much different feel, lighthearted feel than these other movies. And they did a great job of introducing those characters right off the bat. You, you got a song. They're all singing. Um, so you got the personality of the different directors that are dealing with these different franchises that are now all kind of coming together. And my favorite line is when they find Thor and of course rockets like turn on the wipers, turn on the wipers, get them off yeah. the screen. And then they bring him inside and Drax is like absolutely in love with this guy. He's like, Oh, he's like a pirate had a baby <laughs> with an angel. <laughs> it's just like, he was like, I heard, he was I heard like, that uh, James Gunn had actually written the dialogue for the guardians. Is that true? Well, in I this saw, movie. Well, you know, what's interesting is that there's three executive producers that got credit. John Favreau, who's obviously he directed the first couple Iron Mans, uh, Stan Lee, and then James Gunn. So, yeah, I mean, I, I would assume that they all had. Yeah, they must set. have had massive input into this. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. A group effort. But yeah, there is also like the right amount of comedy, too, in it. Like it was to- obviously action packed from the beginning to the end. Right. But like the way Thor and Rocket talk to each other and and just uh, even um, gosh, you just said his name and now I'm having a brain fart. Um, the guy, the big, the big dude from Guardians Drax. of the Galaxy. Yes. Drax. Yeah. And just like the way him and, him and, um, uh, Star-Lord kept like interacting and everything about Thor was just hilarious. Too. Yes. And you yeah. know how like he, well, he just saw him getting all jealous and everything like that. Yep. And there it is. Oh, yes, good. they. It was brilliant the way they paired off the characters in yeah. in their separate scenarios. And that was that was yeah. another thing, which is you you basically had like what four different storylines going on at the same time. Yeah. So that was. But you're right. You know, you had the Peter Parker, uh, Doctor Strange, uh, Iron Man dynamic. Mm-hmm. Um, then you had the, you know, you had Thor and the Guardians. Um, well, and obviously had- we lost Gamora pretty quickly to uh, to Thanos once she she expelled what she needed. You know the exposition that she knew something that yep. he uh, he didn't know obviously and, where and this still leaves it open for the next movie if you know the if if they come back around the people that we've lost hmm. um to meet each other again because you know you didn't see spider-man interact with the uh with uh, whoever else thor and and the other team so you right. you have all that um opportunity as well for the next movie right. okay so let me ask you guys a question so Obviously, we all saw towards the end, everyone, you know, turning to dust, basically, and disappearing. And that, you know, explains that car that crashed in the uh, yeah. in the post-credit the scene. And then yeah. uh, the helicopter, too, that crashed into the building. Obviously, they all turned to the dust and disappeared. And then everything's crashing out of control. So what, the entire what, world is in chaos. Right. So what do we think? What do we think happened? Well, like, he, where do we think? Go ahead, went? Mike. Because. I, I don't know. For me, uh, you know, it comes back to the time stone and, you know, did Dr. Strange actually see something in the future or did he tamper with the time stone? And if so, mm. you know, Marvel has a kind of multiple universes. Is everyone someplace else? That's it. Well, see, I, 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 I got the impression. I mean, I walked away that Thanos got what he wanted. He snapped his finger. He got all five, six stones. He snapped his fingers. Half the universe gone in a heartbeat. Like gone That's as what we dead. saw. We think gone, gone, as in dead, as in, gone dead. as in dead, as in dead, like Dracula being hit by the sun. Like they, there just, you go. Yeah, yeah. And most of them kind of just looked at themselves and, and whisked away. It was only Peter Parker who held on, and that oh. was like the most. Oh my god, that was that was that's a rough scene <laughs> with him because I think it really hit home with with Tony. Then sure, you know this this little adventure he goes on has repercussions. And it kind of proved. And now he's stuck on Titan all by himself. With yeah. oh no, Nebula, Nebula's there. Sorry. And it kind of proved like the random nature of this. Like, I don't think that just because you were Iron Man or Captain America, you you're going to be one of the survivors. Yeah, it just was like, that's what Thanos said, like that his idea for Titan was to randomly, didn't matter if you're rich or poor, um, uh, do away with half the population and then yep. you have no more population problems and everybody would be prosperous. But so, it did set us back to the original Avengers, didn't it? Right, because we're back with Iron Man, Hulk, uh thor is still there cap is still cap, there, right? black widow oh interesting yes hmm. now they also made mention i guess it's been six years since the attack on new york 
Right. Yeah. Tony makes some mention. Right. Yeah. right. When he, when he's arguing with, with Dr. Strange, yeah. um, he's like, you know, this has been in my head for six years since Loki first, you know, brought the Chitauri in there. Mm-hmm. So that's a long time, but um, I want to, I do want to bring up one thing, which is um, I don't know, Mike, it, the, the whole, the whole storyline where, where Thor and the guardians go to this planet and or world, uh, which I I'm drawing a blank on the name. Uh, where they're building these Thanos killing weapons. And that's where Thor's original hammer came from. And they're going to bring this, this build this uh, Stormbreaker. Like, is that, is that like a, a place that exists in the comics with these giant dwarves, which is an oxymoron in and of itself? Because the minute Peter, Peter Dinklage showed up on screen, <laughs> I had like people were losing, like laughing. And it took me out of the movie. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> and I had to explain to my son who this guy was because he doesn't watch Game of Thrones. Right. And um, now he's this huge giant. He's never seen right. Elf. <laughs> it was, and it was just, yeah, it was like this. He, he giant. has to have seen Elf, right? He's the guy oh, from that's Elf. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, I didn't even bring that up because that's one of his favorite quotes. You're an angry elf. So the dwarves do exist. And um, that sort of axe hammer uh, is called Yonborn, uh, okay. which I guess they renamed Stormbreaker for the movie. Uh, but it does exist in one of the runs for Thor. Interesting. Hmm. I mean, I that think- was a great scene. I thought it would. I thought it was. It was fun. But again, h- him as an actor just took. I think it took too many people out of the movie. That <laughs> maybe my only one little gripe with it. He looked like Hagrid from the. Yes, uh, he, did. <laughs> he did. And I think they're losing a really good joke opportunity if nobody refers to that as Windbreaker in the next. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but but well, I I li- also like to go off on that um, that that they, when they get there right before they uh, Peter Dinklage starts to build Thor's new hammer, they they also um, establish that he's built the Infinity Gauntlet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, you see the fake one in the in the Asgard. Tr- yes, yeah, so I was going to bring that up. How could that not exist right. before? This movie, if you know, if there was yeah, a fake, somebody, uh, somebody yeah. actually says to Thanos, I, I think it was one of his henchmen, maybe it was uh, Mar, um, that you were the first to wield all, you would be the first to wield all six of these stones. And it's like, well, if that's the case, then why does the club exist? <laughs> but uh, you find out later that he actually had it personally made. Right. And I kept yelling the whole time, just take the damn thing off his hand. Yeah. You know what? Finally, they wife, got around to that. Yeah. My wife, my wife, when they were, when they were during the scene where they were trying to rip it off and they almost get it off, she yeah. afterwards she said, why didn't they just cut off his arm? Yeah. I know. I know. Oh, yeah. See? I think, but then Quill, Quill lost his. So, yeah. I mean, the Gamora scene was, I, I really liked the dynamic between the two characters. And I guess out of the, the two, whether it was Nebula or Gamora, you just assumed that Nebula was going to, do herself in trying to kill her father. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was, it was heart wrenching. I've said that like three times now, but um, yeah. And now, you know, when he realizes and and the the, the red skull, the red skull shows up. As soon as I heard him, I said, I know that voice. I know that voice. I'm like, Oh my God. So that was, I I thought that was maybe a throwaway cameo, but I thought it was cool that he's been stuck in this realm. But I think Gamora is gone, gone. I agree. You know, yeah. that this is not to return in any way whatsoever. Yeah. No. Unless he decides that that was a mistake killing her. Because when he when he realized that he has to kill the one thing, thing he loves and she's laughing at him, it's like the whole audience knows exactly what's going to happen. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was like it was like it was like so plain as day. And she goes, you love nothing. And he turns around. And he's crying. Mm. And she's like, oh, what, tears. And the and yeah. Red Skull is just like, tears are not for him. Well, he, we definitely found out who is his favorite daughter. In the- yeah, there mm. you go. That's all right. Well, she'll be back in Avatar and Star Trek. Um, So she's got a promising two yeah. other. And I believe that I read somewhere that she's due for the next Guardians movie. So she may not be. Well, done. yeah. Interesting. So let's, uh, let, let's move on to what they showed on the... Uh, extra post credit scene and that was the last basically i don't know if you want to call it a pager or whatever <laughs> it was that he was holding in his hand when it's a he pager, went to yeah. go it's uh, an old school 90s you know he and uh you know it says sending and uh you know or whatever it said i think it said sending and then you know you yep. see the Saw logo the pop up yeah. Yeah, I assume it's a t- totally jacked pager if it's got to go, you know, <laughs> but, through multi dimensions. But wait a minute. But first of all, we haven't seen Nick Fury faked his own death back in 
Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Okay, so we haven't seen him since then. And now he's with Maria Hill, who I assume is still with S.H.I.E.L.D.? Uh, so, yes, what's left of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. Okay. But he's like, oh, we got to call Central, or we got to call Command or whatever. So I, right. I was kind of lost, and I'm like, are we going back in time? Like, I didn't quite get it. And then the pager thing. But obviously that symbol, and again, I, I initially was like, oh, that's Nova Corps. And my son was quick to point out that's Captain Marvel symbol on her uniform. Yeah. And from what I understand, that movie, which is coming out, takes place in the 90s. It takes place before Iron Man even is established. Oh, really? Hmm. But so, Jeff, you did call it in the in our one of our last episodes that they needed to bring somebody in from yeah, outside. Yeah, I was thinking yeah, I, more, yeah, I guess. But yeah, I mean, she's. I mean, if they stick true to the whole Kree scroll right, lore so, and where she gets her armor from, I mean, so we could have. So what we what we may see then is the Captain Marvel movie come out, and that may take place before time. But in the next Avengers. Show that playing. right, right. It's probably gonna take. It's probably gonna pick up exactly where that post credit mm-hmm. scene left off. Right, something along those lines. But yes. I was so um, I was so absorbed in the film that I had forgotten that there was a second Avengers. I was just like <laughs> so into the movie. Are we talking Ult- Ultron? <laughs> you mean you mean a no. movie, another movie coming after this one? Yeah, oh, another gotcha. movie coming after think, this one. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't think they're calling it because originally it was part one and part two, and now it's completely separate. So I don't know, but it does just leave you like, like, where are they going with this? Where, where can you possibly go with this? So I, you know, all my theories are out the window. Um, I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, along not- for the ride. I mean, you know, this is 10 plus years of everything building up and it was, it was well played. It was, <laughs> it and was I like everything. the fact that they called out the, the, the grimace connection with <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> I've seen that joke a few times in different magazines yeah, yeah, where yeah. the trailers dropped and they actually referred to him yeah. as Grimace. Yeah, that's and, the, and the whole nutsack thing. I couldn't get past oh, the it. nuts. <laughs> like, whenever they showed Thanos, I'm like, it does kind of look like yeah. it's like a it's like a, it's like a family guy joke. Oh man. I think Spider Man um, had the line where when he was um was it Mantis when he was saying to Mantis, don't lay eggs in my uh, yes, yep. in, uh, yeah. on me or in Can you make one more pop culture reference and I'm going to throw you out in there? Well, yeah, it was his idea. Alien. You remember that old time movie, Aliens? <laughs> Open up the airlock, blow out the... Yeah, the, the Footloose thing. is like, is Footloose still the greatest movie? It mm, never was never the greatest. Was. It, was, it was the greatest movie. <laughs> so oh, We haven't even mentioned Groot. Uh, I was, was just I a, was just about to mention him, actually. That's funny. Is, Go ahead. Uh, is, I was going to say, you know, what, what it was just... This, this, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I want to call him Baby Groot anymore, but no, but, he's uh, yeah, you know or, this. Uh, I'm sorry. Right? No, like this, teenage Groot. <laughs> this, this teenage Groot was just doing his teenage thing on his video game, and then like, uh, Groot. Oh, like, well, for language. like for like most of the movie, and then you know it, when it, like the time came up, he just he really he stepped up. Yeah. yeah, really stepped up, and now he awesome. got blown to smithereens, and scene. we're not sure. Sure oh, how about when happened. Thor responded to him? He goes, you speak Groot? He goes, yeah, yeah I was an elective in college. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's like uh, so many just throwaway lines that you kind of miss because people are laughing. You're, you're engaged in, in what's going on. Um, I think at one point, Tony Stark says to, to Dr. Strange, is there anything you do besides make balloon animals? Like it's just, <laughs> he was just belittling his magician skills. <laughs> <laughs> okay guys now each one of us which which character do you think came off the best in this movie who is your favorite character in this movie oh man you see i would have to say for me it was thanos i think he brought it i, I think agree. he really brought well it. the fact that mike and i are now team thanos so <laughs> <laughs> i gotta go dr strange dr. i mean i really yeah. liked his portrayal okay. yeah no i i i might have to agree with you on that yeah. Doctor Strange, and I think he's. The we most got two Doctor Strange. He's got, he's got. He's the most important character moving forward as well. Mm-hmm. I truly yeah. believe that he, yeah. again, he's he's seen the end game and he knew what he needed to do, even though he told Tony and Peter he wasn't going to do it. If it came down to protecting that stone, he was going to do it over their lives, and he chose not to. Yeah. Oh, no, and I, so did I, we I, all like just assumed that Tony was going to die when he got stabbed. Yes. Like this was it. Oh, there yeah. you go. Just that was the Carrie Fisher yes, moment. Yes. He's blowing out the airlock. You're like, there you go. All right. She's dead. What? I thought this was what we weren't supposed to talk about. That, right. that you know, that was yep. a big reveal. No. Nope. Mm-hmm. 
Nope, no, he survived. Uh, okay, how about the the Warhouse corner? Who did you think came off the best in this movie? No, I would totally have to agree with you guys too. Is uh, definitely Doctor Strange because, like you said, he he saw everything, and you really saw his his sense of humor in this movie too. Like going back and forth between him and Tony Stark. And uh, just you know, giving it to each other, really. Yes, they were. They absolutely you know? were giving it to each other. It was that was that was hilarious to see because you know Tony is this big, you know, no shot guy, really, in, in in a way, and all he has is his technology, which I think they brought up there in the movie too. It was like you know, you, you know, you're just your technology. You know, what are you without that? You know, and yep, and yep. it was it was it was very fun to watch. It was, that was that was very fun to watch those those three Spider Man yes. too, but even the Spider Man suit I thought was pretty cool too. Oh, that you know, God, Stark arms, gave yeah. it to him. Oh, no, when like, he was when he saved Mantis, that was great. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. A whole new level. Yeah. Oh, how about how about even like when they were fighting Thanos on Titan and Doctor Strange is throwing the discs so that Peter can jump oh, from yeah, one to cool. another. I mean, yes, that was yes. just like, again, it's just it's a throwaway scene, but it's just yeah. like I'm like that's cool. Hey, yeah, yeah. There was so much, so much eye candy going on here. Like, like there's not even any Easter eggs. It's not even like the previous movies where it's like, oh, we saw this in the background. Oh, they mentioned Black Panther. Everything was just thrown in your face. Yeah, I mean, we assume... that whole assault on Wakanda. Now, when you're talking about the discs, Doctor Strange, when he was like teleporting Spider-Man back and forth. Oh, that was that was another uh, great scene. Yes, yeah. the and but the scene before that, where the 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 big guy, Black Black Dwarf, is his name. Is oh, okay, with the um, axe, the guy yeah, with the, the axe. axe. They put him in the Antarctic and they yeah. cut oh, off his yes. hand with the um with one of those discs. So you assume that he's still there. He's like still, you know, so just minus an arm. Uh, yeah. but that was my that thought as well. There. Like afterwards, they could have cut Thanos's arm with one of those, you know, they could have yeah. yeah. one of those. And it, it would have been a very short movie. Yes, it would. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I do. I, I have one thing I need to quibble about, which is in all the promos leading up to this movie, the big hero shot at the end of all the trailers and is all of them running out of the jungle. You got Captain America, <laughs> you've got Bucky, uh, Hulk, Falcon, and they're all charging for toward screen. That doesn't it doesn't even show up in the movie. It's nowhere yeah, to be seen in this movie. Right. Because once you get off it off the Asgardian ship, you never really see the Hulk again. So it was like I kept waiting for the scene to show up and it never showed up. It was a throwaway scene that they either cut or just or created specifically created for, the, for, for the trailer, for yeah. the train, yeah, trailers. Yeah, and I, I don't know. It was, it was, it was such a good movie. I just yes, I'm still coming it down from it. I yeah. saw it literally like three hours ago. I was gonna say you don't even have time to like process it. So <laughs> yeah. I will say the biggest laugh I got in the theater it wasn't even in the movie itself. It was during the previews for Deadpool two, <laughs> where we obviously Josh Brolin, who also plays Cable, he says something. And he goes, oh, you're so dark. You sure you're not from the DC universe? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> just lost it. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to have to yeah. watch that movie. Review oh, that yes. one as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. That's only in a matter of weeks. That's, right. yeah, that's crazy. These are all coming down. You got Solo yeah. coming out. You got Jurassic World coming out. Right. Yes. So, we're gonna, uh, there's going to be plenty of subject matter for, for this podcast. No so doubt. Stay tuned. No doubt about that. So speaking, speaking of trailers, did you guys have the Venom trailer? The second Venom trailer? No. No. See, I did, and I'm even more ambivalent about this movie <laughs> oh, now than I've I was. I've seen it online. Trailer. It looks it, it looks like pre '90s Spawn. No reference to Spider Man whatsoever. And yet he yet, has a white spider on his chest. Yeah, he you know you didn't see him that. Oh, okay, huh. but you saw his face, and he's got the white Spider Man oh. eyes, and the whole look of Venom is based on Spider Man. How can right. they do this without Spider Man? You know, uh, you know. Literally, they could because they kind of set it up in the second trailer of what the what the origin of Venom is, according to this movie. But it has nothing to do with Spider-Man. Um, it has to do with the symbiote, but not right. actual Spider-Man. And the character of Eddie Brock is a reporter in this. They bring him back as a as a reporter. But yet Tom Hardy is doing his best Joey impersonation from Friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a reporter. How are you yeah, doing? Uh, and you know, I couldn't. How you doing? <laughs> I, I protest. I protest this film. Oh man! <laughs> so, 
we spent a, about a half hour now talking about <laughs> talking about Infinity War. I know. Yeah. yeah we well, could, we could go on for another hour. So sure there's a point where we got to get cut off. On, yes. Uh, is yeah, there? Is there? On, I'll I'll just keep bringing up points, which is it's well. It, I'm a, it's, well, you have a chance. Is there any? I was gonna say. Is there any last points? Final that, words that we should talk about this. Anybody? I'm thinking that um, in the second movie, they have to do something with the time stone to bring everybody back. It's it'll be like a Superman moment where mm. the the time is set back, so everybody's alive at the end. I think that's yeah. the only way they can go. But how? But how? How that happens? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Again, he got what he wanted. I mean, he's sitting on his porch at the end. He's watching the sunset. And he got exactly what he wanted. Now he's just waiting for the accolades. Yes. And is he dead? You know, yeah. is he in the afterlife? Oh, that was my question too, because he yeah. shows up all of a sudden. He's like in this ether world talking to baby little girl Gamora, mm. and she's and she's she's like, "Did it? Did you do it?" And he goes, "Yeah." She goes, "And?" And he goes, "I gave up everything." Was or could that have been a time thing too? I don't a know. Part I of the time, you know, was, like he actually died. Like he like. He yeah, got they're... his wish. He he killed half the universe, and unfortunately, he was one of them. Because when you saw him use that, when he snapped his fingers, that gauntlet was like burnt to a crisp. Yeah. Before he disappeared. Yeah. See, I, I assume mean, it... that was from the blow that he took from Thor's hammer. Like that could, was enough to kill him. Right. It, they did say it was a because he did say, you know, you should have gone for the head because he would have been yes, would have been dead. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I don't know. Can we go back and watch it again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure this film will haunt our future podcast. Oh, absolutely. So, For, I mean, when does the next one come out? Oh they didn't. My so my question was, they didn't film these one and two back to back, which I thought, I guess, was, I mean, the Russo brothers killed it, by the way. I mean, they directed my top two movies, which is Winter Soldier and, and uh, Captain America there. Oh, no, Joe Johnson directed Captain America, didn't he? Yeah. yeah, he did. I think they um, did film these back to back, didn't they? <clears throat> they did. So these things yeah. are already in the can. The fact that these guys are able to keep their mouth shut and not. Oh, and also, so uh, I speculated highly on the whole Ant Man, Hawkeye not being in the trailers at all, and they completely dismissed these two characters with one sentence, which I'm fine with because obviously there was enough going on that you really didn't need to introduce two more characters. But uh, I don't know. I have no idea where they're going. And I, I'm, I'm not necessarily uh, upset about that. I like yeah. the unknown. Which kind of opens up the Ant-Man movie because he's... And that Ant-Man Wasp does come out? They have, to, they have to do this before the end of Infinity War in the timeline because I can't see this Ant-Man movie happening after half the world vanishes. Right, so correct. So it must maybe bring it up to speed with where Infinity War ends and then maybe we can see Ant-Man in the next Infinity War movie. That would be great. Uh-oh. Yeah, because no, because oh. what it. Oh, look at you. So, what it looks like is Ant Man is set to release July 6th. Oh, Ant Man and right. Wasp is set to release July 6th this year, 2018. And uh, the next one after that. Captain Marvel. Is, Ca- is Captain Marvel of Captain March Marvel. 8th next year. This is old, by the way, though, because they've nixed that Inhumans movie. We're looking at, we're looking at a yeah. graphic on screen just in case anyone's wondering. Um, but has anyone seen. This in humans that's on ABC. Oh, it's horrible. Oh, well, I think I, that's past tense now. It's no longer on ABC. I know that they canceled it, but I'm flipping through the other night and I'm like, oh, I thought that this was because they released it in the theater and it did horrible. They did the first two yeah, episodes. I didn't bother. I read the reviews and I, I actually enjoyed the first episode because I got I got the impression that they completely went away from everything that made the inhumans the inhumans. And I was very surprised. All of a sudden I'm getting locked bolt, black jaw. I, I got black bolt, I got a Medusa with the hair. I mean, things change after the first episode, but I kind of enjoyed it. I mean, that was like, oh, I kind of wish I did more, but whatever. So then, yeah. So then supposedly to the next Avengers, which we were just wondering about, supposedly as of right now, so that's according May to this, is set year. for next year for May 3rd, twenty. So one year from now, basically. basically. Yeah. So. And there's two mystery titles after that in 2019. Uh, it looks like no, 23 and 2020 supposedly. So yeah, yeah well, so that would make sense. Yeah, if we'll they're see. done with it, I wish they put it out next week. <laughs> <laughs> right, why sit on it? Because now they're going to do the Captain Marvel movie in March. So then everybody will know who Captain Marvel is. And Correct. Yeah, because obviously that come in. Right. Ah yeah. oh, man. Yeah, she's got to tie directly into whatever happens next. Yeah, with the storyline. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, right, let's yeah. uh, have galactic ties. Thumbs up. 
<laughs> Very, I, from everyone. Yeah. Did oh, not yes. disappoint. Agreed. So right. I re- feel really bad for you if you've sat through this whole thing and haven't seen the movie yet. But go <laughs> well, see it, please. Wait a minute. I don't need to see it now. All right, so let's uh, let's move on now. Let's uh, switch the brain here to uh, our classic feature that everybody everybody classic watch it. Feature. Did everybody watch Robin Hood Men in Tights? I did. Oh, yeah. I did indeed. Yeah. I will say that uh, Mrs. Nerf Herder was very excited because uh, apparently she loves Men in Tights. Oh, you interesting. Know, I'm I'm wearing them as we speak. <laughs> so this so this is Mel Brooks, and it's a 1993 production. And I just did some quick research on Wikipedia. <laughs> Cost 20 million to make, made 35 million. So it was a modest hit back then. So uh, it wasn't reviewed very well, but it has become a cult classic. That between this and Spaceballs. These two movies are the biggest Mel Brooks sellers on uh, DVD. Huh. And- really? Yes. Interesting. Wow. A little fun fact. So I. Okay. No, go ahead. So, <laughs> so um, obviously, this is a spoof on the Kevin Costner uh, Robin yes, which, Hood movie. Which came out in 91. So. 91, yes. Right. And uh, for, just for you trivia buffs, which st- which starred Jack Wilde from HR Puff and stuff, but I'm going to get off on the tangent. <laughs> so, anyway, so I remember when that movie came out, the Kevin Costner version. Of course, and, and, that was my know, wedding there was, song. There was a big <laughs> brouhaha because everybody yeah. in the film had an English accent. Oh no! Oh, Jeff. Oh, for, no um, idea. Kevin Costner himself, because <laughs> he had no English speaking. <laughs> yes, so I think this was just that movie was just ripe for a, a spoof, which Mel Brooks jumped on, and uh, so uh, which he's good at. Yeah, yeah, he made his living uh, spoofing. Uh-huh. Um, I will say that. It's been a while since I've seen this. I enjoyed it immensely. I watched it. Um, it is a little dated. There's some serious 1993 references that just most, I think most <laughs> Mel Brooks movies are kind of timeless. You know, you, you can make fun of stuff or whatever, but this, I mean, not that I'm saying that it, it just, you knew exactly when it was made. I mean, you got guys calling each other homeboy. They're rapping at the beginning. You got the yeah. pump sneakers. Uh, white men can't jump reference <laughs> yes. uh, the club where they're putting on the horse. You know? <laughs> uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of visual stuff, the clapper, uh, the woo, 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 Arsenio hall. I mean, yeah. really uh, in the Patriot arrow. I mean, these are all things that are very synonymous with the nineties, but yeah. uh, overall I, I enjoyed it immensely. I thought it was great. Um, it looked like Carrie Ellis was having way too much fun with this. <laughs> oh yeah. Although now it's, I, I have to say it's not my favorite Mel Brooks. It's oh, not not by yet. Um, if if I had to choose, I would probably go with Young Frankenstein. <laughs> Jeff, I know you would probably have a different answer than that. Uh, no, Young Frankenstein is high up there. But um, we spoke last week, and I know that uh, Danielle has this, and I'm going to borrow it, which is Silent Movie. Yes. Which was another HBO staple. Hey, well, yeah, showed HBO showed it numerously. Yeah. Uh, I love that movie to no end. It is nonstop sight gags. Uh, I, if anybody, if no one has ever seen it, it is a silent movie. It's all it's all old placards with the the, the voice and you know the dialogue. And you, there's no character ever says one word except for um, a little special guest star uh, who says one word in the movie, and it's a curse word at that. Uh, Marcel Marceau, who's a mime. Uh, and then there's actually a line in this movie where it's like a mime is a per- terrible thing to waste. So I thought yes. that, was, yeah, that was one of the big laughs yes. for me, the uh, the Richard Lewis line. And he goes, oh, he's, he's such a great, yeah. uh, like he neurotic, like he just plays himself. Yeah. And him with the changing mole, the position. Yes, the mole. What? I got a mole? <laughs> But you know, yeah. my my the one my favorite moment in this movie was the "lend me your ears" part. I oh, think and they all threw yeah. their ears. <laughs> <laughs> that that got the biggest laugh uh, out of me. Yep. Um, I do see the, a direct tie-in with Infinity Wars because at some point he actually gets hit in the face with a gauntlet. So I'm like, all right, we can we can talk about these two together. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Oh, and I guess this is where Hawkeye landed was in this movie. There you go. <laughs> was, well, after watching this, like, especially the fight scene in, in the big, I mean, every old school archery uh, Robin Hood movie, you know, the big fight scene in the uh, the castle. And the, it just made me want to go back and watch the original Errol Flynn Adventures of Robin Hood. And I think, but it was um, fun. 
Richard Lewis was probably um, giving props to the uh, the Lion King Richard in the in yeah, the Robin animated Hood because yeah, the Robin Hood. similarities I think between the two the posture. Yes. The yes. Two. Oh, so let's talk about the cameo at the end, which I guess I I've completely forgot that King Richard is Patrick Stewart. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh my God, look at that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tracy Allman is in this as well. Yeah, she was uh, funny. latrine. She was funny as well. And that was in this was in the middle of Patrick Stewart's um, Picard day. So so that was even oh, yeah, yeah. a bigger geek attraction yeah. in the in 1993. Yeah. And as Daniel pointed out, uh, Dave Chappelle, which I had no reference or, or point because I don't think anybody knew who Dave Chappelle was back then. Oh, back then yeah. But uh, he plays uh, a chew. Um, Unless you watch the MTV you. half hour comedy <laughs> hour. Back then. But that was but that was, was but that that was during this time. I think it was. I think that show was on the air. It then. was that old. What? What's that? Yeah, the, the MTV Dave half Chappelle hour show. comedy hour. No, the no. Dave, Dave Chappelle was the Dave Chappelle show didn't exist. No. OK. When right. He was a comedian. I he, I often saw him like on talk shows and MTV. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. OK. But that was before he had his own show. Yeah. But the, just the fact that his name was at you in the movie. Right. Bless yeah. you. Like, well, his father was a sneeze. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that true? Right. Yeah. yeah. And that Isaac was a running Hayes. joke as well. Bless you. <laughs> Isaac Hayes was a sneeze. Yes. Yeah. From yeah. South Park. Doing his, doing his best uh, Morgan Freeman. Uh, <laughs> and of course, we had our, our um, Mel Brooks cameo. Yes. As the oil, you know. Yes. Not taking a big. It's a, the latest thing. Ladies love it. Role. Yeah. Yeah. He's usually got a much bigger role in his own movies, Mr. Yeah. Brooks. But uh, he, he, he was only a cameo in this movie. It was so, a oh, yes, a worthy choice, I think. This, this, and, and I enjoyed it. I did. Um, yeah, Dick Van Patten also in it. Yes, Abbott. Hi, Abbott. Hey, yeah, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> and they made a Gavin Costello yeah. reference. Wasn't he in Spaceballs as well? He was. Yes, he was. He was. Yeah. He was Princess Vespa's uh, father. Yep. No news is good news. That's another line. Uh, that's He's going to deflower her in the tower. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> there was actually, and they made references straight back to Blazing Saddles. It's good to be the king of uh, yeah. history of the world. So, you know, it was your standard uh, Mel Brooks fair. I think it, I didn't give it enough credit maybe the first couple times I've seen it, but I did enjoy this. So Absolutely. thank you, Danielle. Uh, yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Should thank we you. Uh, announce our next <laughs> Our next classic for next. Well, we might as well. Our, our listeners can view along with us in anticipation. Yes. Consult your library. Yeah. Or, it, is uh, your, it is your. You're up. It's your. Total. It is mine, and we've been talking about this for a while. And I was going to actually throw you guys a curveball because I was watching Stand by Me last night, and I absolutely love that movie. And I'm like, I should just throw this out here and make them watch it. Uh, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm going to stick with the superhero theme. Um. We have just seen a culmination of years and years of top-notch superhero building, but we're going to go back to the beginning, and we're going to see, uh, we're going to review Superman, 1978. Uh, Richard Donner directed it, um, Christopher Reeves, and uh, You Will Believe a Man Can Fly on yeah. wires. And- From the heyday of the blockbuster. The- yeah, I mean, this was, this may have been, I mean, there probably was other superhero movies, but this really... I mean, I remember as a kid, I I never saw it in the theater, but uh, I remember there was like a small little department store and they had above the freezer section, this garbage can. And it was a scene where the kid was like, you know, Superman is like lifting the, the, the car up at the beginning of the movie. And like, I wanted that thing so bad. It was just the greatest visual of this little kid lifting up a car. Um, so yes, that's your homework for next week is uh, Superman. All right. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, so watch it with us, like they just said. And then, hey, let us know what you thought. So, moving yeah, yeah, on. Throw, throw your comments on Facebook. and uh... That's right. And moving on, we want to get into the confessional question of the week. What? Come with us this way, into the booth. Here I'm we go. in there. Come, guys, <laughs> join me. Confessionals. So... The confessional question this week is, what movie have you said you've seen but never actually have? I'm going to guess that Mike says a men in tight since he didn't make a single reference in the rest of the last of the and, and Jeff, you are ever so right. So Robin Hood, men in tight, although... 
I did turn it on and watched about 20 to 25 oh, minutes of it. So when I, I know, saw him. I know. Yeah, I saw a, the Achu reference and the a sneeze reference. And that was enough for you? Yeah, but it's still in the uh, DVD player. And you said, I know. <laughs> 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 your silence was noted <laughs> so mike let's go with your movie is that it <laughs> that is it and what you might find out is the 1978 version of superman is the other what? one i lie about <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna watch it either i probably will but i did watch stand by me last night it was on yes yep. Maybe I should have chose that. Yeah, that'll well, uh, that that'll be your number two. Maybe in there you go. Yeah, and then I'll change it up again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. You go. You somebody else go. Jeff, this was your question, so let's let's hear what. Um, your answer. Well, I'm going to tie it right back into Men in Tights because I have never ever ever seen any one of the Godfather movies, nor yeah. do I have any interest in seeing any of the Godfather movies. I have been yelled at. I have been chastised, yeah. um, and yet here you got Dom DeLuise. Straight up parodying Marlon Brando in Men in Tights, and I knew I knew exactly what he was doing. I knew the references. I knew you yes, know yes because the, the Godfather is so ingrained in it popular is, culture. Right. So, but I have never actually yeah. said that. I've I've only actually seen it recently, and that was just on the insistence of my father from sitting there you down so, watching. So you're you know, right there with part me. one and part two. Oh no, I, I feel a assignment coming on. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I'll go. And this, I just want to say this: this question makes us seem duplicitous and devious that we're <laughs> that we're bragging to people that we've seen all these movies that we, you know, have no interest in seeing. But I do have a big one, and this is pretty much the only reason I say that I've seen it is just to get out of conversations, you know, and just not to hear you. What you haven't seen this movie? You just yes, I've seen it. Let's move on. <laughs> Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Oh. <laughs> Wow, that was a that was a college staple. It was, and you know, I think just the fact that everybody would quote this movie ad yes. nauseum, you know, in the in the voices and everything, made me not want to see it. I've seen bits and pieces here and there, um, Run away! but whenever the subject <laughs> came up, I know it would be you know it would be more than I would like to handle that I didn't see it in conversation. So I've just said that I haven't seen it just to avoid that. So there you go. I'm, I'm changing my classic feature selection now. <laughs> I'm gonna force you to watch it. <laughs> okay, Dave. Um, so the one actually, there's so many, so many sequels to this to this series, if you will, of this movie of these uh, particular movie, and um, every like it's the same thing like you were just saying, Jim. How everybody talks about it, everyone you know probably quotes it. Everyone's in love with it. They got action figures. They got all these different things for this movie, and that is. The Harry Potter movies. Never seen a single one. Never seen a single oh. one. Really? Yep, never. No interest, huh? No interest whatsoever. I don't care about witchcraft and all that yeah, stuff no. really too much. But I, with Harry Potter, you either love it or you hate it. It's, I've just it's, never, I was just never it interested. It, you never seen it. I was just never interested. Everyone always I, ranting yeah, and raving about it. I put that in the it. hate category. If you're never interested, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Just, yeah, just no. Don't subject yourself to eight movies. No, that's know, like it, people say. Oh, you love Buffy. You just made them, You just need to get through the first season. Yeah. Why am I going to sit there through twenty hours? <laughs> well, that's true, Jeff. You would love Buffy. You see you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I did it. So should you. You <laughs> sit through these. <laughs> Harry well, we Potter. Yeah. Dave. No yeah. judgment. No, thanks. No, we're not here to judge. That's why it's a confessional. Uh, that's it. No, no. Does Danielle have anything to throw out? Can she like sign language you something there, David? Yeah, she's the, you know. She, has she ever seen the Scooby Doo movies? Uh, so Scooby Doo movies? I'm sure she's seen those before. Right, Maggie. I'm sure, but uh, supposedly, supposedly one of the ones that she's never seen is uh, Indiana Jones. Any of the Indiana he Jones movies? Any of the Indiana None? Movies. Not even, no. Huh? Not even one. Not even one. Not I can't believe you guys have been. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know this before you married her? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I am shocked. It's actually one of my qualifications on my like track. You know, like, hey, have you ever seen this? Oh, no. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. That's not Swipe like right. That. Swipe right. <laughs> you would enjoy it, Danielle. You really would. <laughs> so... Anyways, she did so, enjoy Star Wars when you forced her to watch it, correct? Yeah, uh, yeah. But wait, has Family Guy ever made uh, 
An Indiana a Jones spoof? reference? Oh, I'm I'm sure. Because she should start there. <laughs> I'm sure they have made a reference before, but uh, but you know, Family Guy had like the three long episodes that was just dedicated to Star Wars. So like, yes, they did. You know, it, it wasn't a normal twenty minute long, you know, episode. But anyways, hmm. so. You I know, we about did it. We put, yeah. I think we can put another one to bed. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, those adventures. Uh, uh, Are we going to talk about next week's episode? Yes, let's let, let's give a preview of next week. Uh, what's the date of of uh, of next Wednesday when when this when episode five is going to drop? Next. We're going to be a few days out of May the fourth. Yeah, it's going to be with you. Yeah, so we would be. like to 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 celebrate Star Wars, even though it's going to be a few days late. So what we're going to do, since the, the latest Star Wars movie, The Last Jedi, is recently new out on Blu-ray, DVD, that we're going to re- review the Blu-ray release of The Last Jedi. And since the podcast is only in its, uh, in its opening weeks here, we've never discussed The Last Jedi. So it'll give us a chance to catch up, to discuss this in, in, in relation to the other Star Wars movies, our Star Wars histories. You've heard a lot of that in the first mm-hmm. episode, but I'm sure we can elaborate. We'd love to elaborate. And, uh, <laughs> yes, we do. And I think we're going to have a confessional, a Star Wars themed confessional as well. Nice. Let's go. May All the right. fourth be with you. Yes. And so also that's going to be you. next week. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I so like stay homework. tuned for that, guys. And, uh, and all like, that in Superman. All right, right, right. All that in Superman. That's right. So. <laughs> there you go. That's all I got. All right. All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for joining us for another episode here. Yes, thank you very much for joining us. It was a yeah. pleasure. And don't forget to follow us on uh, all your social media apps. And uh, find us, like us, subscribe to us, write a five-star review, leave us a sweet comment or something. And, you know. We like comments. Yeah. And maybe we can have you maybe come on as a guest, too, you know. We could start doing Ooh, stuff like that, too, you know. You know, come on as guests or something. Yeah, maybe and... we could do a live episode. What? Of the brain, you know, if that's possible. Wait, it's... that's not live. This is not live. No, it's not live. What's well, live now? But it's possible. But anyways, guys, Anything again, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you guys next week for another episode go. of TMI. Absolutely, onward and upward. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.